Hello everyone and welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful restful Thanksgiving. Today I'm just going to take you through a few hours of my day so you can see some of the things that I get up to, some of the things that I have, uh, just things that I do on a daily basis. Sometimes it can be a quite a busy day but I really make sure that I take some time to actually rest. This morning, first thing, what I'm doing is um, cutting back a lot of the chives. We've had these chives growing all summer and um, periodically I have cut them back. But being so we're coming into the winter season, I wanted to make sure that I can cut as much back as possible. Then I can just put all these back to dry so that I can have them stored up during the, um, the new year and the spring before we plant again. Chives are a milder version of spring onions. They're wonderful in salads and they're absolutely fabulous if you use them on cheddar and chive biscuits. Now I have to cut back this oregano too. This has been growing for quite a while and it's, it's done actually really well in this location. There's been no fertilizers added at all, but it's just seemed to have thrived in a lot of this organic compost that we just had sitting. So we placed a lot of that in there. So what I'm doing now is trying to cut as much back as possible. And then I'm going to actually dry these and just store them up. When you have a vegetable garden growing, you really have to be out you know, at least multiple times a day, at least once a day would be would be uh, the minimum um, that you would be out and you would, you know, try and check everything here. I'm checking the peas that we have growing. Uh, the, they're about, I would say, three feet high, but there isn't any uh, peas on there yet, but there is lots of flowers. So I do try to um, ensure that I check those. And when the peas actually start to produce, then I can harvest those. We have the green beans here, and I'm checking those because you tend to get a lot of uh, insects that uh, try and eat those. But um, as you can see, we do actually have some green beans. They, um, I tasted a couple of them. They're, they're sweet, but they're not quite ready yet. So a few more weeks and they should be ready. I actually caught a, a rabbit in there, a... Uh, few weeks ago so hopefully there's no more rabbits in there at the moment one of the things that I'm changing around is pro probably the time that I grow tomatoes I'm actually growing tomatoes now and they actually have uh, a lot of flowers on there too so that's going to be a big help we have the Swiss chard here and I actually have a lot of the vegetables the winter vegetables covered over with a uh, like a um, a mesh um, so that it can protect against any of the bugs. We've got the broccoli and the the cauliflowers, lots of greens, but no uh, broccoli heads or cauliflower heads at the moment. Here we have the celery, always a wonderful winter vegetable, uh, slow growing, but well worth it. Now we're just going to take the oregano and the chives back into the house, get that cleaned up and get it all prepared. I actually put some pumpkins into the oven because we've had these pumpkins since last year that we grew. And so um, it's really time to, you know, I don't want them to be spoiled. So I'm going to cook them up. And then here you can see I've scooped out a lot of the flesh and we have we put them in the strainer and then what's dripping is just some of the liquid from the pulp and then I'll just bag those up and then I'll store them up for you know future uses when we make muffins or pumpkin pies or anything like that but you can see we had about 17 bags from about 30 plus pumpkins now these were seminal pumpkins and what I'm doing now is just placing them all in the freezer and um, I'll just use them and it's so much more convenient too when you, you actually grow your own food and then store it up like this. It's such a big, big help. 
So I like to make some fresh bread as well as much as I can. Not so much always sourdough, but you know, I do like to try other types of breads too to make because there's such a variety of different breads that you can make. And it really um, gives a change from the regular sliced bread. Do you know, there's so much more to being a homemaker. It's important to let God's spirit dwell within your home and also to confess the word over your home. But um, let's get back to preparing some of the, uh, the herbs that we brought in. I made some chicken broth earlier with the carcass of the turkey and I placed that in there. I think I placed it in the freezer. I tend to place some of them in the freezer so that I, you know, when I have uh, the time really, so that I can get all of that prepared. So it's not really very hard to prepare the broth. You just use the carcass of whatever, uh, whether it be a chicken or a turkey, and then you would uh, put it in the slow cooker. That's what I do, and I leave it for two days. So it's really, really concentrated. And then um, place celery or apples, onions in there, and then, you know, process that in the pressure cooker and there you have your um, chicken broth or turkey broth here i have the oregano that i'm uh, placing in little just little cardboard boxes with tea towels and then i'll just put those on the shelf to dry and they'll be there maybe a month you know there's no real rush for to get these completed and, and dried and put away because i do have some stored but what is good is that you have an abundant supply of food you know in the a lot of people you know they tend to query people who who store up food or who prepare but you know um you think about people some of the women some of the women back in the bible times in the old testament the Bible mentions that we can entertain angels unaware. And if you think back to the account in Genesis where three men visited Abraham, Abraham said to the men, let me prepare some food to refresh you. And so he said to Sarah to hurry and get three large measures of your best flour to knead it into dough and to bake some bread. Then they took a tender calf, they obviously roasted it, and um, they got some yogurt and milk, roasted the meat, and then they served it to the men. Now just think about how organized and prepared Sarah's household was in order to prepare that type of food. Then you have the account of Nabal when he angered David in 1 Samuel 25, Abigail intervened. It said she wasted no time and she gathered 200 loaves of bread, two wineskins full of wine, five sheep that had been slaughtered, a bushel of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins and 200 fig cakes and she packed them on a donkey. Now, obviously, we don't have, uh, we're not traveling around with donkeys at the moment or um, for some time anyway, but can you see how prepared she was, how prepared her home was, how prepared her household was? There is no mention in there that she stopped off at the store or the market to go and get all these groceries. It said that she, you know, otherwise it would have put that in there because it was very specific what she had on hand. So it's about being a good homemaker, using your, your skills, your provisions wisely storing up and being a good homekeeper and a good um a good steward of what's been entrusted to you so i hope this has been you know of some help to you i encourage you to grow food and prepare as much as you can in these troublesome times. We have so much brokenness, so much confusion, and the world is filled with stress. So let us give it all to God, give it all to our Lord, because he has an abundance of grace for us. 
Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow brings its own struggles. And as the scripture says above in Ephesians, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. So be blessed, my friends. Take care. Jesus loves you.